What is going on everybody? It's Stas here. Welcome back to another video. So in this video, we're going to be doing an overall market update, taking a look at the Dow Jones, the S&P 500, and the NASDAQ. We're also going to be doing a trading update, talking about what I ended up doing today on the 6th of June in terms of my trades, as well as taking a look at some other stocks and ETFs that I'm personally watching and keeping my eyes on for potential trades over these next couple of days here, in particular, Tesla stock, as you guys saw in the title of today's video, Tesla stock has been very interesting recently, and we're going to be talking about that in today's video. But before we do get into the topics of today's video, all I ask from you guys out there is if you enjoy the content here on YouTube, simply go down below and hit that like button. It really does support me and supports the channel in general, and I do appreciate every single one of you guys out there doing that. The community we're building building here. The Strive Smart community is absolutely amazing and I'm so grateful for every single one of you guys out there, you know, watching these videos, following along, subscribing, hitting that like button, you know, interacting within our community. It does mean a lot to me. So, without further ado, let's just talk about the continuation as you guys can clearly see here of this rally that we've been seeing of uh, in the stock market right the S&P 500 the SPX the 500 largest publicly traded US companies ended up closing the day up today 17 points here up 0.61%. The Dow Jones Industrial Average up 181 points here, up 0.71% at the close. The NASDAQ here had a pretty good day as well. It, it's, it's currently down 15 points, but remember this e, uh, these are the futures here. So if we go to the one day, one minute very quickly so we can see, we ended up closing nearly at about 7,300. Actually, no, that is not right. We ended up closing at about 7,280. So about, give or take, 15, 20 points above from where we are right now. But nonetheless, it was a green day throughout the major indexes, the three major indexes that we talk about and track on this channel. So pretty good, guys. Pretty good day today. It didn't turn out the way that I personally thought it was. If you guys watched my vi uh, my video earlier today, I thought the market was setting up for a um, sell-off, but just because we did not get that sell-off today, guys, I still, I'm not changing my opinion on uh, that I still think the market is going to sell off and continue its sell off here in the next couple of days. We just did not get that sell off today, but that's okay. We're going to break down um, the technicals here, what I'm personally seeing, what I'm keeping an eye on, and kind of my thoughts just heading into these next couple of trading days. So you guys can clearly see here on the one day, one minute we continued the uptrend from yesterday and from the past couple of days here on the S&P 500. Notice on this five-day, five-minute, the past three days, one, two, three, they've been straight up beautiful. Bull run in the past three days has been what we've been seeing, right? We broke out of these SMA resistances here on the five-day, five-minute, and from that gap up that we saw, it's just been straight up green. Going over here to the 184-hour chart, we notice how we are still trending below that 180 SMA resistance here, and we're actually seeing a bit of rejection right here. As you guys can see, the candlestick here, notice how we popped up a bit. Now the candlestick is closing below that 180 SMA here, heading into the close of the market. That is a pretty decent sign, but not fully confirmed the rejection quite yet. What we would need to see in terms of a rejection on this 184 hour chart on the 180 uh under the 180 SMA we would need to see you know in my opinion going back to this five day five minute we would need to see a full-on break of these support levels under the uh 50 SMA and the 180 SMA if we see that break on the smaller time frame chart on the larger time frame chart will be getting rejected as well and it's super important again like I mentioned in every single video to keep an eye on multiple different time frames so once we do get that um, push down here as indicated by the trend line you know on the longer term charts we're going to be getting rejected under that 180 SMA and we could potentially from that point in time if that does end up happening continue the downtrend that we've been on over the past I guess you can say month at this point 
point because it has been a month that tweet that Trump sent out in the beginning of May that kind of started this whole uh, sell-off. That was in the beginning of May and now it's the beginning of June. So it marks about a month that that's been happening. The sell-off has been happening. So at this point in time, guys, let's take a look at a resistance we're coming up on right now. Actually, we're right at that point at about 2850 on the S&P 500. Notice how ever since we broke above 2800, again, like we saw, we've been rallying. Now we're getting to a point of resistance from back towards the end of March in 2019, right before that big uh, haul up to the all-time highs. From there, we sold off, we broke 2850, making it a resistance, right? And that's exactly where we are right now. So I'd watch and see, you know, if we break out of here tomorrow, that's going to be a pretty good um, bullish sign because at that point, we're out of the 2850 resistance and we're also out of the 180 SMA resistance. That's a pretty good sign for you bulls out there. And exactly the opposite for the bears, right? If you're a bear, what you would want to see is a rejection here at 2850 and a strong gap down and a rejection under that 180 SMA um, resistance here. So those are just a couple of things that I'm watching right now. I know I've been saying this, but it's still true. Even though we've been rallying for three days, the downtrend is still intact, guys. Don't let this confuse you. The downtrend is still 100% intact. Just take a look at that trend line I just drew. If we break out again of these uh, of these two resistances that I just talked about, that's going to be on a technical basis a pretty good um, break of this downtrend pattern, right? So going over here to the Dow Jones Industrial Average, notice how just like the S and we're also trading under that 180 SMA resistance here. We're trending now um, above the 25,500 level of support. We're now in the channel between 26,200 uh, being the resistance and 25,500 being the support. So we're in about a 700 point um, zone right now for the Dow Jones Industrial Average, kind of hovering in the middle of that. And notice how the 180 SMA is actually right in the middle of that horizontal channel that we're trading in uh, right now. So tomorrow, keep an eye, you know, are we going to get rejected by that 180 SMA? If we do, that's going to signify the continuation of the downtrend in my eyes. And, if, and especially if we break below $25,500, if we break that level of support, and then we get into this next horizontal channel level from $25,500 to $25,000 flat, that is also going to be a good sign that the uh, descending pattern is continuing for the Dow Jones Industrial Average. So going over here now to the 20-day, one-hour chart, you know, we broke out of the 180 SMA resistance here, which is a pretty good sign, but notice how drastically overbought the uh, RSI is showing us right now. It's pretty, pretty crazily overbought right now. It's literally at the 80 level. And for those of you guys that don't know about the RSI, you want to learn more about it, I have a dedicated video talking about the RSI. It's about 15 minutes long. Just type in Stasurfes RSI indicator into the YouTube search. It'll pop up and you guys can see how important of an indicator that is and how I personally use it. But Really a brief analysis of it is whenever it's overbought, that gives me kind of a, a, a warning sign. Maybe it's not the best time to hop in a particular stock, ETF, future, or index. We might need to wait for it to cool off a bit and uh, you know before hopping into it. And guys, again, our side... It's not the only one that I use in terms of an indicator. Never use just one indicator to base your decisions, but it's a bunch of different indicators um, used in unison that making decisions off of the, you know unison. Uh, a couple of uh, indicators in unison is the best, right? I'm sorry if that kind of came out weird, but... You just have to use a bunch of indicators. Don't just rely on one. That's kind of the uh, the synopsis, right? So Dow Jones, that's kind of what I'm looking at right now. Longer term, we are still under the uh, resistance levels, but if we start to go to the shorter term uh, time frames, we're starting to see a breakout. But again, be careful. We are very overbought. So the NASDAQ here, the E-mini 
NASDAQ 100 index going on the 184 hour chart here. Let's see if we're also trending below. Yes, we are still trending below the 180 SMA resistance. We actually have quite a bit to go until we're even near that level of resistance at this point. But I guess it's safe to say, especially since we had a stronger day today. Yes, that did rhyme. That did rhyme. Uh, we did break above that 50 SMA. So I guess it's safe to say right now that we are getting out of that level of resistance. Distance. We held it as a support. It's looking like we're popping up. So now we're out of that level. Now we're out to be looking to see if we possibly get rejected is where we are right now. Notice how where we are right now, we actually got rejected here a couple of days ago towards the end of May on May 30th. We got rejected at this level and we also got rejected at this level um, or actually we held this level as a support back on the 23rd of May. So that makes this level a pretty strong level of support for the, or resistance rather at this point for the NASDAQ. So keep an eye, you know, if we break out of this level of resistance, the next spot we're going to be potentially heading to is $7,300 <coughs> seventy flat. From there, we may be going up to 73.50, and at that point, we're going to be super close to that 180 SMA resistance. But just like you know the Dow and just like the S&P, notice how on the smaller time frame charts, guys, the Nasdaq is also a bit. Um, overbought. So that's something to also keep an eye on for um, tomorrow. Well, it's not really overbought on the five day, five minute, but mostly on the 20 day, one hour, it does seem a bit overbought, not as crazy overbought as the Dow was, but still it's more overbought than oversold. So at this point in time, guys, the market's They've kind of just been really funky to me, right? I talked about it earlier in today's video. You know, we're kind of running here on no premise whatsoever. We got some news about a potential Federal Reserve rate cut, which... You know, that does pump a lot of optimism into the stock market, but we haven't gotten definitive news that this is going to happen 100%, right? And even if it does happen, right? Like I said earlier today and yes, in uh, earlier today's video, you know, it doesn't negate the fact that we're still in a trade war. We're still at a point in time where the economic cycle is nearing its end. We're at the 11th year almost of a, uh, of a bull market right now. It doesn't negate the fact that we're in a tariff war now with Mexico. Those tariffs plan to go higher and higher month after month after month. You know, it doesn't negate all of these different negatives, in my opinion, that are occurring right now in the overall, overall economy that have a huge weight on the stock market, which kind of makes me believe, you know, this is not a rally that I am hopping to buy stocks in for swing trading, right? I'm not looking to, you know, buy into this quite yet because honestly, even though we had a strong green day today, I'm not changing my opinion on the fact that I think me personally, again, don't just view this as fact just because you're watching my video, but I still think we're in a bull trap right now. I'm not really, you know, jumping to buy anything. I still think we are in a bull trap. I still think there's more downside to come. So I'm just being very cautious, right? I'm not swing trading anything quite yet. You know, I'm mostly sticking to my strategy of day trading these market ETFs like I talk about in, you know, every single video at this point, you know, in the volatile markets, I've been trading mostly these market ETFs and then these inverse ETFs that you're seeing and that's personally, you know, what I'm doing, right? I'm not looking to swing trade the apples of the world, the Facebooks, the Amazons, you know, some of these, you know, stocks that got battered, but now they're coming back a little bit just because the markets are coming back. You know, I'm not looking to fall into that a trap and sure let's say it's not a trap let's say markets move up five percent i miss out on some money it's okay because it's the principle of sticking to my guns right sticking to my gut and just following through with what i'm setting out for myself right that's what i'm doing here and i'm okay with it i'm comfortable with it so let's talk about what i ended up doing today then we'll talk about tesla very quickly then we'll talk about some other stocks very quickly as well then we'll wrap up the video. So Tesla stock, actually no, let's talk about what I traded today. Today was a red day for me guys. Today, as you guys saw in the morning video, earlier today video, the afternoon video, 
I was looking to trade um, some of these short ETFs this morning, the SQQQ ETF and SPXS, both of these that go up when the markets are selling off, in specific the NASDAQ and the SPX. And short story, uh, long story short, um, I hopped into SQQQ kind of ahead of time. I kind of jumped the gun on it a little bit, uh, you know, antsy on this trade for me. I got in a bit early and the markets never ended up selling off, obviously, as you guys can see. NQ ended up going up. SPX ended up going up. Dow ended up going up. Hence why this ended up going down 2.33%. And hence why I took a loss today. And hence why today was a red day for me. But it's okay. It's okay, guys. And that is um, what ended up happening today. And more specifics here, you know, I kind of got caught in this little trap this morning. We noticed how the markets, if we're going to the NQ really quickly, let's see where we were this morning, 930. We noticed how we started to uh, sell off into the market open right here, right? Notice how 9.39 a.m., we were at about 72.50 on the NASDAQ. We sold off to about 7,200, about a 50-point drop, 40, 50-point drop in an hour. And this kind of caught me in a uh, SQQQ trade where I thought markets were going to sell off. I was getting in at a good point. And from there, I entered in, uh, SQQQ on this little sell-off on NQ. And then what happened to NQ, guys? It reversed heavily to the upside, bringing down SQQQ. And hence why, again, I lost money. So that is what ended up happening today. It wasn't a crazy loss. Again, for all you that follow me for a while, your new viewers out there that may not know this, I'm more conservative. I'm not um, cutting my losses at like 3-4%. I'm not giving it, especially these inverse leverage GTFs that are very volatile, I'm not giving them an insane amount of wiggle room, right? Like I would give maybe a Coca-Cola stock or a J&J &J stock that's not as volatile. These are extremely volatile, these inverse ETFs. And I'm very strict on my loss cut, uh, on my loss cutting, right? Because I don't want to lose a lot in my account if you know, I simply just let it go, right? Because I would be down three, four, five, six percent, whatever. I'd have to cut losses, and that's very detrimental to an account value. So again, we saw it popped up from 9:30 to 10:30. I got in right around here somewhere, like 42.60. You know, I was looking to fill it up, uh, fill the gap up to at least 43 dollars from yesterday before selling. We did not get that. Obviously, I could have sold for like a 0.3 percent profit if I timed it perfectly but I didn't. We started to dump very aggressively. And then once we started to break below, um, you know, this level of support here, you know, I just decided to cut losses. And I think my losses were about like 1%, maybe like one, a little bit less than 1% is where I ended up cutting my losses today on SQQQ. And from there, you know, I kind of wanted to see what the markets were going to shake out uh, like today, right? I didn't want to just force anything else. I was kind of just a spectator in the market um, after that loss. And that's just me being real with you guys. I'm not looking to force a trade after a loss just simply because I took a loss. And I talk about that a lot. Whenever I take losses, I go back. I think, okay, what happened here? What went wrong? You know, I write down some notes. I figure out, you know, what did I do? It, was it my fault? Was it just the market, a rational market, right? And I figure out what I'm going to do. And I just watch the market from there. And that's what I ended up doing. Didn't really see any other plays, any other opportunities. Didn't want to force anything. So that's pretty much it, guys. SQQQ. Although I did take a loss today, I'm still watching this one for my theory of the markets potentially selling off here maybe over the next couple of days. Who knows, guys? And if they do sell off, I'm sure I'll be able to get back, recoup my loss, and make a ton more on top of that if my theory ends up playing out. So let's talk about um, Tesla today very quickly. You guys saw in the title of this video today, is Tesla finally, finally breaking out? So that is kind of a question right now that I've been getting a lot in the Discord on Instagram messages, Discord private messages, Tesla, Tesla, Tesla. If you're in the stock market community on YouTube, I feel like everybody's just been publishing Tesla videos and 
here is a Tesla video for you guys, right? So Tesla, you know, this stock has been on an absolute roar over the past couple of days, literally since the market has recovered. Tesla has been up 30 points. It's ridiculous, guys. Ridiculous. 180 points on Monday. Literally, was this Monday or Tuesday? Monday, Tuesday, whatever. Tuesday, it was at $180, and it went all the way up to $200, $211. So that might be even more than 30 points. No, that's actually exactly 30 points. So this has sparked a lot of interest in um, a potential Tesla trade, right? And people have to understand that this seems like it's just moving aggressively to the upside because of the overall market moving aggressively to the upside as well, which kind of concerns me because if this theory that my theory of the market selling off plays out, this can end up dragging Tesla stock back down into the 190s, maybe back into the 180s, or maybe back into the 170s, right? So this is something that is scaring me. You know, I'm not jumping the gun right now on Tesla whatsoever. And if we're going back to the 184-hour chart, we're noticing, okay, the past three days, we saw the crazy rally. That brought us above that 50 SMA resistance. That's a pretty good sign, right? That's been a resistance over the past couple of months. There's no denying that, right? But notice how we're still trending under the 180 SMA, as you guys can clearly see right here, which has also been a level of resistance for Tesla. And until we get out of there, like I've been saying, guys, religiously over these past couple of months, until we break that level of resistance too, you know, I'm not touching Tesla whatsoever, right? We know now the narrative of Tesla in the overall stock market from analysts, from the media, from just regular retail investors, a lot of people out there, the narrative, there is just very negative for Tesla. A lot of people are, are viewing Tesla very negatively right now. We noticed their previous earnings report was awful, right? An awful loss on um, Tesla stock. You guys can see, you know, on the day they reported earnings, you know, the stock literally went down from like 262 to 225 in the matter of a couple of days after they reported earnings. And from there, it's just been continuously falling. We saw Model 3 production numbers. They weren't up to par with what people thought. And now for the narrative to change in Tesla, like I mentioned in previous videos, we're going to need to see one of two things. We're going to need to see a killer, a killer number in production for Model 3 for other vehicles. We're going to need to see, on the second note, a positive earnings report, right? Whether it's a profit, whether it's just beating the analysts, but still recording losses, but just beating what the analysts uh, we're expecting, you know, that's going to, that's what we need to see at this point to change the narrative of Tesla. Profitable quarter, a beat from analysts, you know, some crazy production numbers, some new news regarding the Shanghai factory, whatever. If that factory starts pumping out a crap ton of cars in the next year, you know, that could be a very positive catalyst for Tesla. And once we get the catalyst, guys, we will know. Trust me on this. We will know because all we will need to do is simply look at the chart, right? If we look at the chart and we see the positive catalyst, what will the stock do most likely? Most likely, not 100% exactly though, uh, for sure, but most likely it's going to break out of these moving average resistances. And from there, that's a very bullish move. And from there, guys, with the positive catalyst, who knows, we may be rallying with Tesla there. And that's just personally what I'm waiting for right now. And from there, I'm looking to swing trade it if that does end up happening. So that's kind of my spiel right now on Tesla. It's it's kind of following the market in a way over the past couple of days. It's still downtrending, still trending below the 180 SMA. And the narrative right now, very negative. We need to see some positive catalysts to push Tesla up and change that narrative. So that's my uh, opinion there on Tesla. I would love to know what you guys think about that down below in the comment section. Now for a couple of stocks that I'm watching uh, for tomorrow. We saw AMD today, guys. Oh my goodness, AMD. 8% day today. And remember how we were talking about 
over the past couple of weeks and months on AMD stock. It has been struggling to get out of $29. Well, we finally got out of $29 into the $30 level, and now we broke into the $31 level, and it's looking like we want to test those all-time highs. Back at, I do believe, $33.60 was the all-time high. Let me double-check that. Nope, it was not. It was $34.14. So now I would love to see a pullback on AMD. The RSI is over bought. I would love to see it cool off a bit. And from there, that could open up a potential entry point right now on AMD. Maybe at $31, that could be a good spot. Maybe if it sells off to $30.75, that could be a good pullback enter for uh, entry for advanced micro devices. Looking for that right now. Again, it's very overbought. A cool off pullback will be ideal here for an entry point. So AMD, guys, that's my personal opinion on that. Obviously, Tesla, I'm watching Tesla, guys, as we talked about earlier. Tesla, it's still downtrending, but if the markets push up again, who knows? Tesla might follow, and we might get closer to that 180 SMA resistance on that 184-hour chart. So this could be a gap fill play up to 210, maybe 225, not 225, maybe 215. That could be a play right there as well. Uh, some actually I haven't talked about gold in a while. Gold has been on an absolute tear recently, which also kind of worries me about the entire uh, market in general. You, you got you guys have to realize when the markets are getting kind of shaky, when people start to lose confidence in the markets, you know the stock market. What do they do? They start to buy some. Uh, metals, right? Precious metals. They start to buy some gold. They might start to buy some silver because a lot of people view these as hedges in a stock market crash. And a lot of people think there is a stock market crash on the horizon. And that could be why gold is shooting up, right? We notice all the trade war stuff's going on, tariffs, global economy, iffy, right? Everything's a bit iffy right now. That's causing a lot of uncertainty in stocks. People are flooding into gold, hence why the big pop-up here in gold. So gold right now, it's at a resistance. I say if we do break 1350, we could be pushing up to the mid 1370s maybe, maybe 1380. That could open up a very big move on JNUG. So JNUG is one that I'm watching here. It's been on an absolute tear. Seems like we are holding that $8.20 level of support. So just keeping an eye on it to see if it does continue this uptrend. So JNUG, J-N-U-G there. Uh, natural gas, a lot of people have been asking me about natural gas here. You know, it's clearly been clobbered. It hit 230, I believe, today. Going on the 20-day, one hour, you know, I've been getting questions about UGAS, what I need to see for a play on UGAS, which goes up when natural gas is going up. We would need to see a break out of this 50 SMA resistance that's been a resistance over the past couple of weeks here. So if we get that, that could be a very bullish move on natural gas. We will be able to get into you guys there for a pretty solid move. Also today, uh, we saw... XOP is slowly starting to flatten out. So today we saw that we held a support from yesterday on XOP. So I would love to see, you know, if, if this starts to pop up above the 50 SMA resistance, this could be a play for Gush, which goes up whenever XOP is going up. So I'm keeping an eye on Gush tomorrow and Drip. You know, drip will go up if this sells off. And if this aggressively sells off tomorrow, let's say the markets in general sell off, XOP will most likely follow and drip will be a very good play for tomorrow. So overall, guys, I'm watching a bunch of inverse ETFs again, and specific the gold and crude oil ones. Uh, I'm watching, again, like always, these market ETFs, SPXS, SQQQ, TVIX, UVXY, uh, TQQQ, as well as QQQ, and Tesla and AMD are two stocks that I'm also watching. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, feel free to go down below and hit that like button. Drop a comment. Let me know what you guys think about these picks. What do you guys think about the market right now? And most importantly, what do you guys think about Tesla stock? That's the talk in the stock market community. Tesla 
has been at the top of the headlines. I would love to talk to you guys down below in the comment section. If you guys want to uh, join our Discord chat and our Facebook chat, both of those are linked down below in the description box. 100% free of charge. I'll catch you all in the next video. Thank you all for watching. I appreciate you guys so much. Peace out.